Dum. Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm Banjo Ben, your host here on the site that teaches you how to play guitar, banjo and mandolin. And today we're continuing our alternating thumb finger style course. This is lesson number three. I'm titling it Expanding the Territory because we're stretching beyond the one chord that we've been working in so far, which is C. So I've given you a very systematic approach to this style of playing, making it to where anybody who wants to learn how to play this alternating thumb style of finger style guitar can learn. So we started at first with just getting the feel for it, right? Just being able to get our pick hand fingers to work without introducing too much complexity. And then in the second lesson, we intro the Cinco. We talked about syncopation and that backbeat, getting the notes happening at different times. Today, we're expanding the territory. We're going to leave the C chord just for a little while. We'll come back to it. And we're going to talk about the G chord and the F chord. And we're going to talk about how to walk back and forth between those. We're going to have a lot of fun today. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, somewhere like that, I would love for you to come over to BanjoBenClark.com. You can enjoy this full 30-minute lesson as well as the ones before it. You can also download the tabs. If you're watching here on the site, just scroll down, click on the next video segment, and we'll get started. Today we're expanding the territory. We're going outside of the C chord, but it's very important that you have a grasp of what we've covered so far. So I just want to do a really quick review. This will allow you to see if you're up to speed and ready to progress on. If you're not, then you can go back and review those lessons. Let's think back and remember back to what we covered in lesson one. Check out that tab there. This is where we're just getting, getting the feel for the style. We're wanting to get our, our thumb on autopilot, alternating between those bass strings, and we want to be able to play our index and middle fingers along with it. So try to play through this tab with me and uh, see how you do. One, two, ready, go. So if you could play through that um, and not have your brain explode and know what's going on, then you've you've uh, you've accomplished the objectives in lesson one. Now in lesson two, we intro the Cinco. Uh, we uh, we talked about backbeat and not only being able to play these fingers at the same time, but also being able to play them um, in in between the beats. Let's take a look at that tab and see if you can play along with me on that. One, two, ready, go. Okay, so a little bit more going on there. We're still just operating out of that C chord, but we have our fingers being more independent. So if you're able to play through both of those lines of tab and know what's happening and it feels familiar, then you're ready to move on. And today we're going to move into some other chords. I'm calling it expanding the territory uh, because if we're thinking about in the key of C, which is a very common finger style key, there's two main major chords that we're going to go to. Um, we're going to go often to the F chord and to the G chords, and that's what we're going to look at today. Um, but not just in the key of C, you'll often play in other keys where you'll need those chords. So we're going to systematically just tackle those to make sure we get everything learned the way that we should. Let's talk about the G chord first. Check out the tab there. We're just going to talk about the G chord in the uh, what I would call the home position. So just using the first three frets. And if you think about every possible note that you could use to play a type of G chord, uh, G major chord in the first three frets. Then you're gonna you're gonna have this arpeggio here in measure nine. Okay, so those are all the notes in a G major triad within those first three frets, which is what we're going to concentrate on today. You know, most people know the G chord, and um, but you may not think about it in context of playing in finger style, it's a little bit different if all that you've ever done is just played it with rhythm. What's neat about the G chord is there's lots of open string options, right? So when you play that very open G chord, the traditional three finger style, you're only fretting three strings, but you have three strings that are tuned to notes of the G chord. So that's pretty handy, especially in finger style stuff, because that means when we're over a G chord, we can reach those for those open strings and, um, and often use them uh, to fill in without having to fret them. When we think about the bass notes for a G chord, meaning the notes that I'm going to kind of take care of with my alternating thumb, uh, there's really four strings that I'm primarily going to use my thumb on, and those are the lowest four strings, and typically fretted at the third fret here, at the second fret here, and then open and open. 
See, that's what our thumb really needs to get used to hitting. You know what's different about that in the C chord, can you see? <laughs> is that we're going to uh, we're going to use our thumb on that G string more than if we're playing out of a C chord position. That's just what I've found. So let's go ahead and try to put that into practice a little bit. Measure 11. Let's uh, let's do the C soft. You remember from from the previous lessons. That just means we're going to uh, use our thumb on two strings, just back and forth. We're not going to really get into the alternating thumb quite yet. That's measure 12. Um, as far as the position goes, why don't you use your middle two fingers? So I want you to place your ring finger on that lowest E string on the third fret, and I want you to place your middle finger on the second fret. And so your thumb is just gonna go back and forth. Now let's add in our other fingers um, in measure 11. So on the first beat, let's play the second string open. And then on the third beat, let's play our index finger on the third string. So just try to repeat measure 11 until you're comfortable with that. Again, we need to have that thumb on autopilot, so play it long enough to where your thumb just kind of naturally goes bump, 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 seesaws between those two strings. Now, once you have that down, you've done it 100 times, let's move on to measure 12, and let's keep the same position with our front hand, but this time, let's alternate our thumb. So forget about the other notes, just look at what the thumb's doing, and you'll see that it's jumping from the lowest string up to the fourth string to the D string, and then back to the fifth string, and then back to the fourth string. So if we just isolate the thumb, it sounds like this. So maybe just practice that for a while. <laughs> Excuse me, I had a coughing fit. <clears throat> I need some coffee. So we've practiced that alternating thumb, and then let's add our other fingers for what's written in measure 12. It sounds like this. So you might wanna take measures 11 and 12 and just go back and forth till you're comfortable. Cool, now let's bring in some elements from lesson two with the syncopation and we'll see what happens. We're gonna do measure 13 the seesaw, so at this time we're going to go from the lowest string up to the fourth string, and we're going to introduce that syncopated or the backbeat note there on that G string. It sounds like this. Let's do it again. We're just introducing our fingers to what it feels like to play out of a G chord position. So these are all skills that we've learned already. We're just doing it in a little different place, so it takes um, it takes us having to systematically teach ourselves how to do this to be comfortable with it. Now, let's add a little bit more. Measure 14, sounds like this. So 13 and 14 together. That's pretty cool, a little faster. Okay, oh, we're getting close. Now, in measure 15, let's do some alternate thumbs, so we're going to use three strings down there. Go ahead and place your pinky down on the third fret on the first string. That's that G note. So now we're, we're making a traditional G chord, playing with our last three fingers. And when we introduce the alternate thumb and some syncopation and adding that first string, oh, now we've, we've made it a bit more complex, but that's okay. We're making some progress. It sounds like this, measure 15. sounding pretty, ain't it? And then we add measure 16. Sounds like this. So we put 15, 16 together. Oh, it's so pretty. Slowly, sounds like this. Oh, now we're starting to sound like a finger picker. Let me play a little faster for you. Okay, what I want to do next is talk about some walks from the G chord to the C chord, because we're going to use that for our final exam today. Let's take a look at those in measure 17. We're going to um, 
talk about a G to C walk. This is just one of literally dozens that you could do. So I just want to give you an example so we can put into practice in a little bit. So we start on our G bass note, just so you understand what's going on. And we're going to walk up the scale, the C major scale, or the G major scale, same notes here, to the C root, to go back to a C chord. But those are only three notes, one, two, three, before you arrive there. And we have four beats that we need to take up. So I'm going to throw a little pinch in there, beat two, to uh, fill up the time. Cool, so if you were down on the G chord and you were doing some things like we just learned, and it was time to go to the C chord. See how that works? Now, let's talk about also the C to G walk, because maybe we were on the C, and we wanted to go back down to the G chord. This is one way we could do it, and we're just going to simply reverse what we've done. We're going to walk back down the, the scale, but since there's only three notes walking back and forth, we need four beats for measure 19, so I'm going to put a pinch in there. It sounds like this. So if we were playing some uh, C stuff that we learned in lesson two, and we wanted to go down to the G stuff that we just learned, we could do it. And then we can walk about, uh, walk back up, right? <laughs> okay, so now we're starting to sound like finger cell players, aren't we? Okay, so that's the G chord. Let's cover the F chord now in the same way, and then we're going to uh, do a final exam to make sure that you've really learned this. Because um, I, I just want to make sure that we have all the building blocks in place before we get into more advanced techniques. If you're watching somewhere else besides the website, this will be a great time to come over to banjobenclark.com, join as a GoPick member, see the rest of this lesson, take that final exam, make sure you got it. And also, if you wanted to review the first two, you could check those out as well. And I have hundreds of lessons there. So come on over and check it out. Mm -hmm.